This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. I am the all-knowing oracle. I have seen the future. And I can tell you all the you need to know. Only joking, I'm not the oracle. Now I can see why old people get so grumpy and pessimistic because you see the same stuff happen over and over again. And today we're gonna talk about Webflow apps and what you should know before diving right in because there are some things that I've discovered through my recent usage of it that I think you should know and will help you become a better user of it. Now, I'll get it right out the way now. I have no problem with Webflow apps. They're great. They're actually really, really great. And it's great for the ecosystem. It's great for you. It's great for me. It's great for everyone. So I'm not here to say don't use uh, the Webflow apps. Really, this is a conversation between me and you. So for those of you who haven't been uh, indoctrinated, is that even a word? Indoctrinated. The Webflow app ecosystem is something that was relatively uh, recently introduced. It allows two things. It replaces the integration kind of menu that you'd see on the, the site settings of your website. And it, it, it basically handles the integrations between Webflow and other apps in a secure way. The other side of it is it actually provides a UI to extend the functionality of Webflow uh, and actually write HTML that isn't actually available in Webflow. For instance, FinSuite's table plugin that actually creates semantic HTML tables, which Webflow doesn't already have. And it can do other things like uh, write JavaScript or you know anything on the front end that, that is required for those plugins to work. And this is great for a few different reasons. One, it extends the functionality of Webflow. So things that Webflow are incapable of implementing or don't want to implement, then you're able to build an app that extends that functionality and really the world becomes your oyster with regards to having a UI that, that manipulates the, the code of, of the Webflow website. The other aspect of it is, is a revenue opportunity. You know, you can offer the ability to build plugins or build apps for your clients or work with apps and, and various things like that. So it's a, it's a really exciting um, time for, for Webflow right now that I think they've really opened the doors to make Webflow an even more powerful tool. So as I say, I've had the recent pleasure of using Webflow apps on a project where I needed a HubSpot form to submit to HubSpot. And this was on the launch day of the Webflow apps. And I tied the HubSpot form to, to, to my form and it just was not working. So since then, I've been in contact with the creators of the app, I'm actually working with them to fix the problem and hopefully we'll all see that uh, in the near future. However, the journey that this led me down was a realization that because of the way that apps are, you know, they're, the way that they work, I was able to leverage and steal the JavaScript code that the HubSpot app was using. Even though I wasn't, I'd removed all of my connections to any of my forms, there was no reason uh, for the HubSpot app to run. I was still seeing the front end JavaScript and I was able to dig around in there and basically just leverage the JavaScript that was already running on the page. And so with that, that got me thinking a lot about WordPress actually. And a common complaint about WordPress is that it's slow, it's clunky, it's rubbish, it's smelly. Most of these comments are from people who have actually had no real experience using WordPress. And furthermore, they probably have never actually learned how to build a WordPress website properly. But you hear it time and time again, these complaints about it. The reason why WordPress websites do become slow and do become clunky is in part to do with their app ecosystem, their, their plugin ecosystem. And it's super, it's, it's great, it's powerful. You Anything you want, you can get. And the problem arises when uh, developers or, you know, clients begin to add plugins for no reason. They add them, they activate them and realize they don't need them and don't deactivate them or they just it just adds and adds and adds this bloat to the the website and and so with this recent 
uh, encounter with the HubSpot app, it really reminded me how we can get carried away with just adding apps. And specifically that even though I didn't have any, I wasn't using the app, just because it was added into my apps kind of menu on the side there, the JavaScript was still running, potentially even some backend code that I don't have any kind of control over. So with every app that you add, you are adding a request, you're adding JavaScript, you're adding bloat to your website, just like a WordPress website. This is not all bad. This is good. And like I say, it worked to my favor because I was able to leverage JavaScript that was being loaded that I hadn't written. It just goes to remind us that adding apps just willy-nilly and not being careful about how they're used or whether they need to still be used can has a real runaway effect on the bloatedness and the speed of our website. And for those of you who are really familiar with uh, Webflow, you'll know that this has already taken place in things like CSS classes, where people just aren't cleaning up the CSS that they're no longer using. Or if they're creating styles and figuring something out, they're not traversing back through their logic uh, to remove styles that they don't need. I'd hate to think on a very um, on a large website where it's got lots of apps running, how many of those apps are actually being used? So we're already seeing this laziness. I mean, I'm lazy. That's why we use Webflow, right? It does so much heavy lifting for us. We're all lazy. I don't mean that in a derogatory way. It's it's a lazy tool. So you just you just don't really think about what you're doing. You expect the kind of tool to take care of it for you. So. That is kind of the reason why I'm seeing the Webflow app ecosystem and just wanting to provide a voice and a perspective of the responsibility or the downsides to, to using the app ecosystem. So if you know of any other reason or other downsides to using the apps, leave them in the comments below because then this can be a kind of one-stop forum for kind of things to watch out for in the app ecosystem or things to consider in the app ecosystem that we can all just benefit from and learn from. And so I hope this was helpful. I hope you've learned something. I've certainly learned something. Give it a like if you did enjoy the episode. And if you want to hear more about the upsides and downsides or an unbiased opinion of Webflow, then hit the subscribe button. And until next time, happy no coding.